Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to convert one of your footer columns into a widget field. This is really cool. If you feel this is too much for you, you can always have a developer do this for you. And the whole point of doing this is to convert these footer columns into something that you can change really easily or your employee or team member or neighbor or cousin or whoever can change these uh, footer items in your footer without being a developer and without screwing everything up. So let me share my screen. I'm going to show you guys super easy how to do this. So on this uh, on this demo site, I just have plain unvarnished cornerstone showing. You can see that it has you know a really terrible looking footer by default. It doesn't have to be terrible, but moving on. So let's say we want to uh, change up our navigate and our categories and our popular brand to be links that we can easily change ourselves. Let me show you how to do it. Number one, you're going to want to get, not so subtle plug, my app, Epic Page Builder Widgets. This is, uh, what I'm going to show you guys how to use is a free widget that's in this. So you don't even have to pay to do this, but there are some cool premium widgets you can pay for, like our accordion. And to plug, what we're going to use is the custom menu widget. So when you get it, slide this over to install the custom midget, custom <laughs> menu widget. <laughs> the custom menu widget into your store all right so let me show you we're going to go into the code and it's going to be a brief trip we're going to click into storefront themes edit theme files of your currently live theme and now this the exact location where you're going may vary if you're using some you know billy bob theme off of who knows what's it.com you know, it could be wherever. Most of you guys are running Cornerstone, which you yeah, should be. Cornerstone is really the, the flagship. It's what you want to be on. So I'm going to show you where to get to this in Cornerstone and just know that the location might be a little bit different where you're going, but it should be, you know, the same technique, right? So you go into Templates, Components, Common, Footer. Templates, Components, Templates, Components, Common, Footer. Footer.html. And this will come up and you'll see a couple different um, things here. First of all, you have this like banners bottom thing. You're probably not even using that. And then we get straight into the footer. And within the footer, we have this container. And then we start having all these things that say article, footer, info, call, footer, info, call, and uh, footer info call. So you want to find out, first of all, which one of these is it that you're trying to edit, right? So I know for sure this one that says categories is one that I'm going to want to edit. So what I'm going to do is within this article, which is basically that whole column that is the categories, right? I'm going to come in here and right under where it says this H3, which is the footer heading, I'm going to insert this snippet of code that says bracket, 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 region, space, name, equals, and then in quotation marks has the name that I'm trying to, uh, of, a, of a region that I'm putting in here. So I'm going to call this footer underline categories because I'm replacing the categories column content with this region, right? Now this bit that comes after it, dash dash global, you need that because that means that any page that this shows up on, it should display the data and your footer shows up on every page. So any changes that you make to regionize or widgetize the footer needs to have this dash dash global wherever you plant a new region. So region space name equals whatever you want Use underlines instead of dashes in your name. And then dash dash global makes it a global region. And so what we're going to do initially is we're just going to put these regions in. And then we're going to put the content in. And then we're going to come back and remove the content that was there. So this is one that I want to do. I want to, I'm going to go ahead and copy this code that I put in here. And I'm going to come down to this next region, which is clearly uh, where it's displaying the brands. And I want to, um, I'm going to replace that column as well. So I'm going to call that one footer underline 
brands dash dash global and the reason that we have to do that is we can't well we don't want to use the same region name because then any content that you put in this region would also show where that region shows up again here right so you'd end up having the same the same uh, content in two different categories which would look kind of dumb so that is this column and this column. So now we just kind of find where the navigate column content is. And it's probably up here where it says navigate. So right underneath that H3, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to call this one footer underline navigate. All right. So let's save and apply the file. So all we've done up until this point is just add regions and regions aren't even going to show on the front end unless there is content put into those regions. So we just want the regions to show up so that we can put content in it. And I'm going to leave this stencil file open in this tab because we're going to come back to it and this, this will just leave it already open to footer.html. All right, so what we're going to do next, we're going to come back to a different tab where we can see the back end and we're going to click customize to go into our theme. And now, because we put those regions in there, they should show up in the theme editor or the customizer. So if we scroll down, sweet, we see three beautiful, ugly purple blocks. So because these are purple, it means that they're global regions just like this. And unlike this one, any content you put in this one, because it's blue, is not going to be global, meaning that the content will only show on that one individual page, right? But we want, again, we want anything that we put in these footer columns to be the same across all pages. So we want this to look purple. If it doesn't look purple, you need to go back and put in the dash dash global because that's what makes it purple and therefore global. All right. So if we scroll down here in the sidebar, we're going to see um, some custom widgets here. And these are uh, these have been pushed in from the Page Builder widgets app. And if you recall, at the beginning of this video, I showed you guys how and where to push in the custom menu widget, which is right here. It says custom menu. Unfortunately, BigCommerce won't let us have custom icons yet. Maybe in the future, maybe by the time you see this, if it doesn't look like a Rubik's cube or a Kubert block, if you're as old as me, then maybe they fix that. But here's what we want to do at the moment is we want to take this custom menu and you can see when I hover over, it says custom menu dash PBW, which is page builder widgets. We're going to just drag that in here. That's it. That's all we're going to do. And you can see that it, went ahead and put some sample links in here. Um, I'm going to fix something right away because this drives me nuts, which mm -hmm. is this little bit of spacing. You can see how it looks kind of like it's indented. And that's because when you put a widget in it, uh, let's see, here's the widget that we put in, custom menu, PBW. It goes in a column, that column's in a layout, that layout is in the region, right? But if we go into the column right above it, you can see that it's got some padding on the left and right. So I just I just zero those out um, so that it doesn't affect my styling, basically. Now, <clears throat> you can see that the styling on this is quite a bit different than the text that was there, and it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. So we're going to want to style this a little bit. So let's go back into the widget, which we can do by hitting it from the Layers menu, or we can just click back into it by clicking on here somewhere. And you can see that there's uh, three different links. They're all just like default links right now, but we want to make these not so loud as they are. So let's click into the three dots that are up here and then go into settings for this widget. Now we can say that these are horizontal links, which that actually won't do anything because there's not enough horizontal space to do it. But we can go in here and let's shrink the size down. I'm going to put them as 16 pixels because I know that's what Google likes, even though I think they're in the theme is 14 by default. I'm going to put them up to 16 and you can see that the font weight is set to bold. So let's change that to normal and we can change the text color, I guess, if we want. So let's just make them a little bit less loud. Let's select this one text color on hover. Let's just leave it black, right? And then we can come in here to spacing and say, okay, there's a bunch of spacing in here. Let's get rid of at least the top, bottom, and left, right? Because I want to cinch this up to the left of the column. So I'm also going to get rid of the margin. I'm going to get rid of the top, the right, and the left. And so now you can see it's cinched up pretty good, which is nice. 
I get rid of the right here too. So the only thing I'm leaving actually is actually heck, I'm gonna just yeah, let's just leave the five because that looked kind of nice. So let's let's decrease it to three. All right, I'm digressing. Um, there's a couple other things you can do, like you know, background, background and hover, all that kind of stuff. Oops, sorry. You gotta be careful with your <clears throat> with your mouse wheel because if you're if you're clicked into one of these numbers, then the mouse wheel will ratchet that up and down, like you saw here just a second ago. Um, we could hit border, but we don't really want any border in these links. So, you know, this looks pretty good, actually. Uh, let's just do it like that. All right. So what we're going to do now, we have these styled. Let's go ahead and click back out, and then let's actually make these links what they should be, right? So we could say about us is the first one. You can see we're editing link one, which is the top one. And let's say that goes to slash about dash us we can click over to go to link two or we can just click the link to here up up here so then let's say this one is contact us and that goes to contact let's edit the third one which is going to be blog let's say that goes to blog now you can see i'm just starting with the slash after the domain you can include the whole domain if you want to it's not going to make a huge difference because this is just going to link to that same page uh, within the context of the site that we're currently on. And you can also, like if, if one of these is an external link, you can say open in a new tab. But if these are all internal links, then you don't really have to do that. So there's one more that we didn't do, which is sitemap. So I'm going to click the plus up here, which gives us a fourth link. And I'm going to say sitemap. And that goes to sitemap.php. Let's say, or I think it's like, maybe it's just sitemap. All right, we'll just leave it like that. The, you know, the exact links here don't really matter. I'm just doing this so that you guys can kind of see how to enter this. And so that you can see that you can, can totally control these with this custom menu widget. You can also like drag them up and down if you want to reorder them. So it's a really nice tool. And again, this is one of the widgets on the free side of the plugin. So it doesn't even cost you anything to get this. All right. So now we need to do the same thing for the other ones. And I'm going to show you a hack here because if we just drag another custom menu widget in there, you can see it doesn't have the same styling. And then you're going to say, well, now i got to restyle every one. And that's true unless you do my little hack, which is this. So if we have this custom menu widget already styled, already nice, we can, first of all, let me, sorry, did the wrong thing. We can copy this and this, so this creates a second version of it within the context of that one widget field. And then what we can do is we can make sure that there's a layout. So I'm going to just drag a layout, make it one column. And so now there is a layout for sure in there. I'm going to delete this second one. So there's a layout there. I'm going to do the same thing over here too. So there's a layout in each one of these, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click into this one. Then I'm going to click the Layers menu. And then that takes me to the Layers. And took me to the wrong one. But you can see that here there's this layer where I have the footer navigate. I have the layout. I have one column. And then I have two page builder widgets in there. And you can see that there is a little handlebar right next to this, right? So what we can do is we can actually drag it. Oh, can I do it? No, I got to expand this so I can see the column. And now I can drag this one that's the duplicate into the column. And then that just moved it into that layer, right? Now I can do the same thing again, which is I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to say this uh, brands column over here. I'm going to just drag the duplicate into that column. All right, so now I have one in each. I do need to go into each of the columns that that widget is in and get rid of that padding so that it looks better. And let's see, do I need to do that here too? Yep. Do, do, do. All right. So now we have widgets in each of the columns. We can come into this categories one and we're only trying to get three columns in there. So I'm going to delete the fourth link and you can just come in here and click into link one, main cat, you know, link it to whatever, item two, fish and plant care. 
and blah, blah, blah. So you can see basically what we're doing is we're just rebuilding the exact links that we want, right? Because we want these to be fully dynamic and fully controllable. And so once you're done building your links, you'll end up with basically a duplicate of the items that are in each of these columns, right? Except for the top one is gonna be the one that you can fully control because it's widget based. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click publish. And it does take a minute, but if we refresh on the front end, you should be able to see, uh, after it's refreshed, you should be able to see all of the extra um, links that we put in there. There it is. All right, so we have all of our links. You can see I didn't actually play with the background, but there is a little background thing that you can turn off if you don't like it, but you know that's kind of like a little bit of extra nicety. Mm -hmm. So we have all of our new links that we want to get that we want to save. Now we just want to get rid of the original ones that were put in there um, that we're basically replacing, right? So we're going to go back to our stencil file editor tab that we left open a while ago. And we're going to go to each of these sections and you could comment it out just like this. That whole UL, that whole whole unordered list. So we should end up with just the H3 and just the region, right? And for each of those three columns. So let's do it right here too for the brand section. If you're going to do a lot of coding, I recommend checking out my video about how to do stencil local. It's really awesome. And it's not as slow as doing things in the theme editor, but it is 100% more coding. All right, so if we go back to the front end, refresh, now you can see we only have our completely controllable widget-oriented columns here for each of these in the footer, and now you're in control. Hopefully you guys found this helpful, and if you did, hit the like button and be sure to join our community of store owners at joinecommercegrowth.com. And you know, if you guys have questions, leave me a comment. I'm here to help you guys and post videos every week. If you guys need help, hit me up at epicdesignlabs.com. And thank you so much.